Okay, so this is screencast number five, Microsoft Excel training session, uh, continuation of drawing graphs. Now, in the previous screencast, we have managed to reproduce the same graph as the original, uh, though now we need to have this best fit line. Now, this what we call the best fit line in Excel actually has a special name. It's called a trend line. Now, how do we have how do we get the trend line on our graph? Well, all you have to do is you select your data, okay? Just click on one crosses on one data points like that, and all of them are highlighted. Now, click on the right click and go to add trend line, okay? So add trend line. As you can see, it automatically put a trend line uh, on the graph. However, here in the format trend line menu, you can choose a different kinds of trend line. You can make your trend line, in other words, the curve which fits your data point in the best possible way. Like, for example, you can make it exponential, you can make it logarithmic, you can make it a polynomial and change the order as you wish. You can make it a power or you can make it moving average. Now moving average is something different, we don't care about that, but most of the time you either use a linear or polynomial, okay? Now in this case, in our case, uh, the data points that we have are depending linearly, okay? So the, uh, the M value depends on V linearly, so we choose the linear option, okay? So now we have chosen the linear option. Now you can change the color of it, so the original is red, so let's make it red. You go to line color, and you click solid line, and choose the color to be red, okay? Now let's make it a little bit thicker, so let's go to line style, and change the thickness to, for example, 2. Okay, so that's good enough. Now also, as you can see here, the trend line intersects the y-axis, okay? While here, in our graph, the trend line ends at the last point. Now, we want it to actually go further and intersect the y-axis. So, what do we do? Well, we go to the trend line options, and here, where it says forecast, forward and backward, we need to change the number of periods that we want to go backward, okay? So, we want to go backward by one uh, by one square that is 10 periods okay sorry 20 periods so backwards by 20 periods you type in 20 like that and click close okay and now you have it here now in principle you can also go forward if you want that doesn't uh, the procedure is is the same you just type in 20 forward or 10 forward as you wish. Now another thing that you can see on the original uh, graph is that there is an equation, an actual mathematical equation which gives us the uh, the mathematical equation of that trend line. So how do we get it on our graph? So you click on trend line again, so you select the trend line, right click, format trend line, and here you tick display equation chart, okay? So you display equation and you close. Now also note that in the original graph, in the legend, the red line is labeled as best fit line. In our case, by default, the name is given as a linear raw data. So how do we change that? Well, let's, let's select the trend line. So let's click on that and make a right click and then go to Format Trend Line. So in this window, you have a trend line name, so you can change it from Automatic to Custom, and give it the name that you want. So let's say Best Fit Line. So let's type in Best Fit Line, and click Close. And there you go. Now, another thing that you note is that in the original graph, the equation, the numbers in the equation, are given to just one decimal place. In our case, by default, if you look at this, the numbers, let's, let's just increase the font size a little bit so that you can see it. So here, the numbers are given to four decimal places, 
now four decimal place here and three decimal place here so how do we change that well let's click on that label okay make a right click and go to format trend line label okay format trend line label and here again the same category and then you choose number and you change the number of decimal places to one okay so let's click one and close and now the numbers have been changed to one decimal place as in the original okay so that's pretty much it with the trend line now a couple other features that you can add to the graph well first of all let's make the uh, the labels on the axis with bold okay so bold as in the original so here it is 11 font size so let's make it 11 as well a little bit larger same thing here so let's make it bold and then size 11 and then this one is actually not bold and this one is not bold either so it's italicized and this one is also italicized here you can compare this one is uh, font size 12 font size 12 and Arial narrow so let's make the same thing here font size 12 and font type Arial narrow okay so same thing is here font size 12 Arial narrow like that now of course that's up to you you can change it as you wish uh, whichever font type you like that doesn't really matter okay let's put this a little bit in the center like that and let's decrease the font size just a little bit like that and make it italicized for example okay so now on the graph sometimes you, there are special features that you want to highlight like for example here now because this y intercept has a physical meaning to it we already know that this intercept is the mass of the vessel if you already have the uh, hand hand drawn graphing session then you should know that this y intercept corresponds to the mass of the empty vessel of the container so that is a special feature of that graph so how do we highlight that well we can put a text box in the graph with an arrow specifying that this specific points corresponds to the mass of the vessel now how do you go about that well you go to you select your graph and you go to insert okay the insert menu and then here you can select a text box okay so let's select a text box click on that and put it wherever you want on the graph for example here and then you can type in the text okay so let's type in the the value of y intercept is 16.7 grams and that is your value here in the equation you can see that and you can say that this is the mass of the vessel okay full stop like that and that's your text well you can make the text box smaller um, so let's move a little bit here and oops let's go back so this is your text box ah, here if you select the text box and then go to select the text box and enter like that you can decrease the size like this and you can for example change the uh, the color of the box so let's make it for example green like this okay so green and you can change the font size as you wish and then let's make this nice arrow which is pointing to that specific point here so let's go back to the insert menu and in the insert menu let's choose the shapes and in the shapes you can choose for example this nice arrow curved arrow connector so let's click on that and let's click anywhere here and then we drag it to this point and that's your arrow 
Okay, so it's showing you the the point that you're referring to. Again, you can select that and you can change its format. You can make the color different, for example, green, like that. And of course, you can do exactly the same kind of thing with the uh, with the equation. Just an arrow which is pointing towards that equation. Again, you choose shapes, curved, and like that. And again, you can change the color as you wish. Line color, red. Now, a good thing about, you know, um, graphs in Excel is that the graph in Excel, if you select these data points, okay, you select these data points, then if you go back to your table, you can see that the table is highlighted. Okay? The table is highlighted. And in principle, you can change automatically the area that you want to plot. So just as an example, okay, so let's click any let's click here and click enter. Okay, so let's type in any numbers. Okay, I'll I'll move this a little bit here. And I will type any other numbers, like for example, let's say equals this numbers times two, okay, times two. Enter, and I drag it down like that. Okay, suppose now I want to plot these numbers versus these numbers, these new numbers. Okay, so if I select these data points here, like that, Again, these are highlighted, but now I can take this box here, the blue box, and just click on it and drag it here, okay? And automatically now these are the data points that are being plotted. As you can see, my graph has changed. Obviously, the equation has changed, you know, the, uh, the maximum value has changed and so on, so you have to change the axis and so on, but you don't really need to do a new graph. All you have to do is just edit the graph. So let's go back, let's select this and drag it back down here. Okay, so now we are back to our original graph. Also, if for example you, you realize that you made a mistake and actually this is not 37, but for example 30, if you just change that number to for example 30 and pay attention to this point here, once I click enter this point will go down. See? The point has went down, the graph has changed, and so has the trend line and the equation. So everything has changed automatically. And you, need, you don't need to redraw the graph, and that's the beauty of using Excel for the graphing. If you were to do this, you know, by hand, you would have to erase the entire thing and start all over again. So using Excel in, in the laboratories is very handy. So let's go back to 37 and the original graph. Now, this introduction that was given is, give, is you know, is a, is a very basic one. Now, there are more advanced features in Excel, uh, which are not that often used in our physics labs, but if you, uh, if you try to play around with them yourself, you will realize that some of the features are very useful, and Excel can actually be used a lot for data processing, not just in the lab, in the lab sessions, but you know, maybe in your daily life. So that's it. That's the end of the Excel training session.